Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to talk about pointers and arrays. So let's just take a quick uh, review of pointers here. So take a look at this code and we see that we have a pointer uh, to an int variable called count pointer. So we then create an int variable named count and then we have our count pointer variable set equal to the address of count. So let me go ahead and uh, draw this up here. Make my screen a little bit bigger for you. Okay, so I'll draw my main memory here. And over here will be my heap. So I have a variable called count pointer and a variable called count. Each one of them points to an individual location in memory. I'll give some values to my locations. Okay, and I say count gets the value of 10. Count pointer gets the address of count, which in this case will be 8008. Okay, uh, Okay, so on line 4, it prints out the value of count, so we take count, we go to that location, it's going to print out a 10. On line 5, it prints out the dereference value of count pointer. So we go to count pointer's location of memory, we grab that address, we go to that address and get the value out. So line 5 is also going to print 10. Line 6, we print out the value of count pointer, so we take count pointer, we follow that arrow, we get 8008. Line 7, we print out the address of count. So we have count, we go and we find the address, which is 8008. Line 8, we print out the address of count pointer. In this case, it's 8004. Note that if you were to run this program yourself, you will not get those same values for the addresses because it's going to be dependent on your operating system and what exactly it has allocated uh, to your program as to what space and memory uh, those are going to be stored in. Okay, so that reviews pointers for us. Let's go on to uh, our next slide here. The size of operator. Um, it's a neat operator that allows us to determine the number of bytes that we have in a variable. So where we can use this here is we can also use it to figure out the number of bytes that we have in an array. So take a look at this example that I have on the slide. Line one, I have my array has 20 elements in it and that it's a float array. That means that I've created 20 float values. Uh, when you see uh, line two, I create a pointer to my array. Now notice here uh, that what I've done is I don't have an ampersand in front of my array. The reason that I don't have an ampersand in front of my array is because my array is an array and all arrays are pointers. So my array, even though I've written it like this, this is how I've declared it, uh, it is actually a pointer still. Arrays are just special types of pointers. Uh, and the only thing that's special about them is that I can utilize that bracket notation. Put the brackets at the end there. That's the only thing that's special about an array. Other than that, it's a pointer. Uh, it's just pointing to an individual location in memory. I can iterate through it using pointer notation or array notation. And you'll see that in just a second, how we do pointer arithmetic on it. So on line two, I set the value of uh, my pointer equal to my array, and I don't have the ampersand in front of my array because my array is already a pointer. Okay, so remember that, that the array is actually a special pointer. Uh, and so when I set it equal to, when I have a pointer and I want to get the address out of the array, I don't put the ampersand in front of it so that I can get the uh, address back out of it since my array is already a pointer. Okay, line three, I'm printing out the size of my array. So this is going to tell me the number of bytes that I have in this variable, which is my array. Well, this is uh, an array. So I have four bytes per float. Let's assume that it's four bytes per float on a 32-bit uh, hardware. And then this is going to print out 80 on line three. So it's going to be 80 bytes printed out on line three. Line four now, when I'm printing out the size of a pointer, this is really interesting that the size of a pointer is always the same. It's always going to be four. 
uh, regardless of what type of pointer it is, if it's a float pointer, or a char pointer, an int pointer, a double pointer, it's always going to be four because that's how much memory a pointer takes up. This is just one location of memory, which is, in this case, four bytes. So line four is going to print four. Line three, in this case, is going to print 80. Okay, take a look at this code that I have here. This is going to show you uh, what is known as pointer arithmetic. The way the pointer arithmetic works uh, is that we can... Uh, just add numbers to a pointer and it's automatically going to add the number of bytes to that pointer based on the memory location. Let's walk through this example. So we see here line one, I create an array called my array with five elements inside of it. It's a float array and I have five elements inside of it, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Let me go ahead and draw out in main memory here exactly what this looks like. Okay, so we've got my array here, pointing out a location of memory, and I have the values in there. Remember, this is just a shortcut for initializing all of the values inside of an array at the time that you declare it. Okay, so that is what I have in my array. Line two, I say my pointer is going to be equal to my array, which is going to be the address of my array. So it's 8008. Now, an array I told you is a special pointer. It actually points to the location that contains the first element. Okay, An array points to the location that contains the first element. However, if you just print out the value my array with no brackets around the outside of it, it is going to print out the address of that element because it's a special pointer. So if I just use my array with no brackets like I have here on line two, it's going to just print out uh, the address, or it's going to give you the address of uh, my array. Make my window a little bigger here so you can see what I'm drawing up here on the board. Okay, on line three, I'm printing out the value of my pointer. We go my pointer, we follow it, we print out 8008. Okay, that's just printing out the value of a pointer. Note that I'm printing it out as a percent %d. Even though it's pointing at a float, I still print out the value of pointers as percent %d's because that is going to be um, uh, an integer that gets printed out since that's what an address is, is just an integer. Okay, line four, I'm printing out the D reference value of my pointer. So my pointer, I go to memory, I see that I have 8008, I go to location 8008, and I get the value out which is a five. So line four is gonna print out the value five. Line five, my array sub zero also gives me a five. So that's gonna print out the same thing. Line six, dereference my array. That's an interesting one there. When I dereference my array, remember my array's value is actually 8008 because it's that special pointer. So when I dereference my array, it goes to location 8008 and grabs the value out of it. So line six is just another way of printing out the first element in the array, which in this case is five. Uh, line seven, my pointer sub zero. This actually does compile and it does work. It's interesting that it does and it's a very, very dangerous way of doing things. It works because my pointer is actually pointing at an array. If my pointer was not pointing at an array, that line of code would still compile, but when you got to it in your code, it would make your program crash. The only reason that we're able to use array notation on a pointer is because that pointer happens to be pointing at an array. This is very, very dangerous. I do not recommend doing this. I did this, put this in the slide just so that you understand that you can do it, but I would strongly discourage you from doing that. Um, line eight is using pointer notation, the pointer arithmetic. This is the preferred way of printing out the value. So when I print out my pointer sub zero on line seven, it's going to print out number five. Line eight now, I'm printing out the D reference value of my pointer plus one. Okay, so let's write this out a little bit so we understand exactly what's going on here. The value of my pointer currently is 8008. Now, if I add one to it and I get 8009, this is not going to be exactly what I want to print out. And let me show you exactly what the problem is going to be here. At location 8008, I have the value five. However, the size of that location of memory is actually four bytes, which is 32 bits. So what this is going to look like in main memory at location 8008, so 
So here's location 8008. I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Location 8009 has zeros. Location 8010 has all zeros. And location 8011 has 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. This is the representation of 5 in binary. 0, 1, 0, 1. So what I have here is I have 8008, 9, and 10 that all have zeros in it. 8011 has a 5 inside of it. So if when I added 1, uh, oh, let me keep going a little bit more here. Uh, okay, so now 8012, I have the value 10. Well, that's going to be all zeros in 12, all zeros in 13, all zeros in 14, and the value 10 in 15, which is 1010. Zero, one, zero. Okay? The reason that I have 8 bits in each one of these locations is each location holds 1 byte, and 1 byte is 8 bits. And so that's how we get the uh, number of bits there, uh, the, all the zeros that we have. And each one of these locations in memory consists of 4 bytes. The reason I know it's 4 bytes is because that's what a float is. A float makes up 4 bytes. So these are the values that I have inside of those locations in memory. Going back to the problem that I have here on line 8, is the value of my pointer is 8008. Now if I add 1 to it, I get 8009, and I try to print this out as a float. I try to print out what's that location 8009 as a float, it's going to take 4 bytes from 8009. So it's going to take 8009, 10, 11, and 12. So what I just did, essentially, is I bit shifted my number 5 over to the left 5 places. And then it would print that out. That's probably not what I wanted because I didn't want to split my individual locations of memory. Instead, what I wanted to do was add one entire location to memory on line 8. And that's actually what happens. It does not just add one byte to that location. It actually adds one memory location. The way that it figures this out is it knows that my pointer is pointing at a float. And it knows that the size of a float is 4 bytes. So when I add 1 to the value of my pointer, it's actually going to add 4 bytes to that. So instead of just adding a 1, it's actually going to add 4 bytes to it, and I get 8,012. So when I print out on line 8 the value of my pointer, adding 1 to it, which is going to add 4 bytes because the size of a float is 4, it's going to get me 8,012. I then dereference 8,012. So I come here to 8,012, grab the value back out of it, and that's going to give me a 10 that gets printed out. Line 9 is going to print out the same thing. That prints out a 10 also. That's just using array notation for doing it as opposed to using pointer arithmetic. Now, now that we've learned this, I need to caution you on something. Pointer arithmetic can potentially be dangerous because you can continue adding to a pointer and eventually you're going to get outside the range of the array and you're going to get down to the next location of memory and the one after that and the one after that and so on. And we don't know what is stored in those locations. The operating system is going to allocate to you a certain area of memory which is called your program sandbox. You are not allowed to play outside of that sandbox. If you try to read a location of memory outside of your program sandbox, the operating system is going to crash your program. It's just going to terminate because you've tried to read outside of the locations that the operating system allows you to. Um, any of the locations inside of your own program, though, are fair game. You're able to go in and out of those with no problem. So you can decrement, you can increment, and as long as that's inside of your program sandbox, you'll be able to read what that data is. This does get a little dangerous also if you start using multiple threads and you have uh, a lot of different um, data which is stored inside of your main memory during your program. Uh, so, anyways, just a, a little caution there is that you can actually use pointer arithmetic to get outside of the range of your array. Um, however, if you get outside of the range of the sandbox of your program, then the operating system is going to crash your program. You can go ahead and write a little test program to see that. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything on your computer. Your operating system won't let you hurt something uh, through this program. It's just going to uh, crash your program. So you have to restart your program after that. Okay, so this slide here just explains a little bit of what's going on when I add 
uh, when I add a value to a pointer, it's actually adding one memory location to it. So let's take a look at this code and see what's going on here. I have an array called my r with 10 elements in it from one to 10. Line two, I create my pointer equals my r. So that's gonna have the address of my r is gonna be stored in my pointer. Line three, I print out the dereference value of my pointer. It prints out the value of the first element in the array, which is a one. I then add one to it, which is gonna add one memory location to it. In this case, an int is four bytes. So I'm gonna add four uh, to the previous location and that's going to then print out on line five the dereference value of the uh, second element in my array. So it's gonna print out two on line five. Line six, I'm adding the size of an integer. Well, the size of an integer is actually four. When I add that to my pointer, it's actually adding four memory locations to the value of my pointer. So uh, it's gonna print out then on line seven, it's gonna print out a six. So it doesn't just add one location. If you wanna just add one location, then you do a plus one. If you do a plus of size of int, you're actually adding four, it's gonna add four memory locations to uh, your uh, pointer, uh, what your pointer is pointing at. So it's gonna print out a six on line seven. Okay, how do we pass arrays into functions now? Um, so, uh, I just have one slide on this because it's really not that difficult. There's two ways that we can pass arrays into functions. The first way is by passing it as an array. That's what you see here on line one. It's that I have an array notation there and I can pass the array in. I'm using array notation inside of that function. The second way is I can pass it in as a pointer and then inside I can use pointer notation. Okay, now keep in mind on uh, inside of the print array two on line seven, I could probably, in this case, use array notation on that pointer. However, as I specified on one of the previous slides, that's dangerous to do because if that wasn't a, an array that was passed in as that pointer, which there's no guarantee it's gonna be an array. In our case, we know what it's passed in because we see down in the main function what it's gonna do. But there's a chance that that's not an array that's passed in there. And if it's not an array and you try to access it using array notation, your program is going to crash. Okay, so uh, the code that I have on lines one through six and the code that I have on lines seven through 12 uh, execute the same way. They work exactly the same. Uh, they're gonna print out all of the values in the array, uh, line 18 and 19. You see that even when I call it, I call it exactly the same way. The reason I can do that is because uh, I can on line 18, I can pass an array into an array, which would be the function on line one. Line 19, I can pass an array into a pointer because arrays are pointers. They're just special pointers, but they are pointers. So I could do that also, and that takes care of, uh, so line 19 would call the function, which is on line seven. Okay, uh, so that does it for pointers and arrays. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.